So you want to marry a revert? Assalamu alaikum everybody, this is your brother Sam and everyone welcome back to my channel Sam of Somalia. So today what I wanted to do was after a discussion with my wife in the car, we were driving home from London back to Cornwall recently and we got into this discussion about the reality of actually marrying a revert. Obviously a lot of you know my wife is Somali. Um, I embraced Islam a good sort of eight years ago now, alhamdulillah. And um, you know, since I've been running this channel, I've um, been doing it for almost for over a year now, hit almost 10,000 subscribers, which is a huge thank you to you guys. And um, throughout it, Obviously, with my audience knowing that I'm a revert and, and I'm married to a Somali, I've received easily tens, if not over a hundred emails from, mostly from sisters, writing to me and saying, like, I'm, I, I really want to marry a, a revert, and specifically, like, a, a, a white revert. And I've been talking to my wife about this recently, and I, I thought it would be really important to put together a video about some, some of the realities of that, um, and how it might be a mistake sometimes, actually, to do that. And, you know, firstly, I want to begin with that you know, if if you come from a family who are open-minded enough to let you marry a revert, and I suppose this video isn't exclusively to the sisters, but I think um, just because I am a revert brother, I think I'm, I'll am i probably present it, what it would be like to marry a revert brother mm. rather than a sister, because mm. there probably are some, some differences to to whether you marry a revert brother or a revert sister, but um, I suppose just because I'm speaking from my own experience and my own thoughts, like I'm, I'm specifically talking to the sisters more so probably. So, the first thing is, if you're from a family that are open-minded enough to let you marry a revert, mashallah tabarakallah. Yeah, like that's, it's a very, very beautiful thing if your family, you know, considering what some cultural backgrounds will encourage you to do, will encourage you to just marry someone from your own country or your own tribe or even your own village in some cases, or or even want you to marry even from their own family, yeah, even like a cousin or something. So if you're from a family, like, you know, may Allah bless you, yeah, may Allah reward your family who, who are open-minded enough to consider letting you marry someone who's who's not even from a Muslim family, yeah? let, let, like, let, let alone being from like something close to you. So, um, uh, you know, so like, the, the important thing first and foremost is to not put reverts on a pedestal just because they're reverts, yeah? <laughs> like, like, honestly, the amount of times when I've, I've been like in a discussion and there's been some uncles around and that, and they've, they've all been like, oh, mashallah, tabarakallah. First time I saw you, I knew you were the best. I knew you were the best, mashallah. Like this guy doesn't even know me yet. I might be, I might be like proper sucker Jan in secret, yeah. But he doesn't even know me or with my friends. But he sees me and straight away. People think like, oh, mashallah, you know, you, you know, we really put reverts on a pedestal. Like these people have come from, you know, kufr. They've come from disbelief and chosen Islam. And and to a lot of people, it's a really beautiful thing. And even to us reverts, yeah, when we're upon Islam and we've been Muslims for a long time, it's even beautiful for us to see people embrace Islam. But but it's important not to put someone on a pedestal because. Honestly, like, what, once you've embraced Islam, shaitan comes to the reverse just as he comes to you guys. Like, just as he comes to people who are, who have, just as he comes to people who have been raised in Muslim families. Like, if anything, shaitan might come more to the individual who, who, who's chosen to, to, to embrace Islam. So, you know, it's, it's important not to put these people on a pedestal. They're still only humans. Like, like perfection is only for the prophets. Alayhum salatu wassalam. Like, so, so, so it's important not to kind of idolize people like that because another thing is when you marry an individual when you marry a revert brother or a revert sister you'll realize they're just people yeah they wake up with stinky breath like they they leave the bathroom messy they like reverts are, are just human beings yeah <laughs> like 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 they shouldn't be like an, 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 an kind of a putting on a pedestal and idolizing of uh, of reverts really despite how beautiful it is when someone chooses to embrace islam so the first thing that that wasn't really any of the points that i'd sort of thought about but but the first point that i wanted to Kind of bring to your attention inshallah is that a lot of the time people want to marry a revert because they think they can escape cultural baggage because of it they think like you know they're, they're raised in the netherlands they're raised in germany australia or the uk or whatever and if they marry a revert that'll mean they'll be marrying someone who's sort of closer to their culture because they're not really the same culture as their parents anymore because they're raised somewhere else, somewhere else and they they kind of get to escape that but the reality is like white people have a culture too yeah <laughs> like like you know, uh, this is sort of a side point, yeah, but, but a little while ago I did a talk show. Um, I did like a live talk show on quite a large TV channel and, um, and, and not Islam channel, it's, it's, it's a different talk show that I did. And, um, and it was kind of a talk show about marrying into other cultures and, um, and I was the first guest on there and stuff. And they're talking about me learning Somali and how I go to such an effort to learn to speak Somali and, and, um, and learn about my wife's culture. And the second guest was, um, uh, was a Russian and, uh, and, and, and that Russian had also married a Somali. And um, and in it, because because he hadn't made that much effort to learn Somali and stuff, and they say, oh, but you have your own culture, so you probably wouldn't have. 
And I was thinking, like, whoa, hold up a minute. <laughs> like, like I just don't have my own culture because I'm because I'm white. But like, like as white British people, we have our own culture and stuff. Even things that are could be transferred to being even within Islam as well. Just t- just kind of our own attitudes and our own outlooks on the world. Our own, um, you know, like white people have a very real culture. It's not, you know, culture isn't just something reserved for people from, um, you know, Africa and Asia. Like. Like white people have a culture as well like, that you'll have to deal with. There'll be a clash in that. Yeah, there'll, there'll be a clash in that because he has his own culture. Like, so someone who's embraced Islam, they're not just a completely blank slate. Like, they come from a culture. They have a language. They have a they have a background and stuff as well that they had before Islam. And the vast majority of it they'll bring into Islam as well. Because the vast majority of things that most humans do are actually permissible. It's only, you know, it's only like a few habits and stuff that Allah has made haram. So... So the second thing that I wanted to move on to is sometimes, especially sisters, and I've received so many emails talking about this, is that sometimes sisters use it as an excuse to be a worse wife, unfortunately, like, because they know that generally white people in our culture, we don't expect the same traditional roles from, from our wives, you know, usually you both kind of have a watered down version of each other, you know, like, like the husband won't be a provider and the, and the wife won't be like a carer at the home, you'll just sort of water down each of them and, and stuff, so there's not from white people generally that white men there's not the same expectation of their wives to um you know to maintain a home and, and have have a more prominent role in raising the children and stuff like that and i think sometimes sisters when they marry a white revert brother they think that they're gonna be able to escape from a lot of those roles they think they can treat a white revert brother as a husband the way that they wouldn't people of their own cultures like like honestly i know i know sisters who have married revert brothers and they do things they would never get away with if they'd married another Bangladeshi or Kashmiri or, or Pakistani or a Nigerian. Yeah, like they, they would never, ever get away with it. Like, you know, just, I don't know, being out all the time or whatever, going to spend loads of time with your own family and not spending time with him and stuff like that. Like, you know, so, so you shouldn't use it as an excuse of that. Yeah, you should look at yourself when you're thinking. You know, it, before a sister emails me and says, oh, I'd really like to marry a white revert. Like, you should think about actually what your reasons are. You know, and it shouldn't be so you think you can get away with being a worse wife, essentially, yeah, like, you know, so that, that, that's just something else that I wanted to point out to you, inshallah. So, you know, we, we need to get a little bit more serious about, like, about some actual practical practical realities about after marriage, because before marriage, you know, like, it's, um, but before marriage is kind of things that I've talked about above, like, whether you've got the right reasons to, and whether you've understood um, actually what like a, a white revert is, is like before marriage and, and, and you know when you're thinking about getting married to them but after marriage you've got to take it very seriously that your in-laws are going to be non-muslims and the grandparents of your children are going to be non-muslims so you know if you consider it you need to have the discussion inshallah before you get married that like you know what what role will your grandparents play in, in, in raising in raising your son and you know alhamdulillah I have a very very considerate family and my family know that that for for me, the absolute priority is Islam. For me, my, my, parent, my parents know that. So when they look after our son, Yusuf, they only feed him halal meat, um, you know, and they entirely understand that, that that's the priority for me. But you need to have that discussion because, you know, even just around some awkward stuff, like, like for me, sometimes if we were to meet my cousins and stuff, we've got like male cousins going to give my wife a hug and stuff like that. And, you know, it's, it's up to the husband or, or the revert to make sure that their family appreciate those things that that either are or aren't acceptable in the religion and and that they're not going to be imposed on you inshallah sisters so um you know there's so many things you know like us us muslims we like we know we're different yeah we we know we have a different way of looking at the world we know that there are things that are haram for us that 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 the non-muslims think is absolutely acceptable like they think it's absolutely fine And, and and in their head it's not wrong yeah it's not that they're nasty people when they when they do these things it's just in their head it's not wrong so like but being aware that your in-laws um being aware that your your in-laws will probably be non-muslims you need to take that very seriously i mean like even though i'm a revert myself i know like if allah blesses us with a daughter when she's of like age when she wants to get married i'd seriously I'd have serious reservations about her marrying a Reva, which, which is awful for me to say, because, because, because I'm I'm really happily married with a wife because her family were open-minded enough to let her marry me, yeah. But like, but I I would probably have those reservations. I think you know, like, are my grandchildren going to be more exposed to a non-Muslim side of the family than they are us? Like, I, I would be concerned about that, and you know, it's something that you should take seriously because they don't just go away. Like his mother doesn't just go away. His, you know, his 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 cousins and his brothers and sisters and stuff. They don't just go away because because he's married to you now, and you know, and it's unfair even after marriage for you to insist that he doesn't see them anymore or anything like that. So, you know, something to take very very seriously, inshallah. 
Um, a couple of things that I had I had left to talk about. I'm looking down. I've got some written down down there. That's why I don't I don't sort of always talk to people, people looking down. Um, yeah, so I've mentioned those things, and then you know, lastly, it's something that my wife mentioned um, in the car. But it's worth it's worth saying. It's a little bit more morbid, but it's worth saying. Like we know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has said to us in the Quran that kullu nafsin ذائقةُ الموت. We know that like every soul will taste death, and and when it comes to be the time, like if if Allah chooses to take mine and my wife's life before my son is older, like my son's taken my name, like generally, generally in Somali, among Somalis, like the children will take the father's name, um, even though the, even if the mother doesn't take the the mother doesn't take her husband's name, so that's so like the children are part of the father's family, and um, you know, and she will maintain her father's name, um, you know, like because the children will have the the father's family's name then it's quite possibly that that family will want to adopt that son, will want to take that child, will want custody of that child. Like, that child has their name, you know, and that's something you need to you need to think about, you know. Like, if you don't know when Allah will take your life, and if Allah chooses to take your life when, you know, when your your children are still young, then it might be that the non-Muslim side of the family end up with the children. And, you know, like, like for my family, like, we're both happy. My wife and I are both happy. If my family embraced Islam and that happens, alhamdulillah, like, the job done, yeah? Job done. Like, they've embraced Islam, alhamdulillah, like, that wouldn't be a problem, yeah? Like, it, it's absolutely nothing to do with us having a preference for one culture over another or loving one family more than we love another family. It, it's literally just because we want our children to be raised upon Islam. And, and my family know that. Like, my, my family, even though they're non-Muslims, they know that. And, and even if that might be hard for them, that they know that's one of my values and that's important to me. And, you know, I, I, I pray that if, if Allah were to take my life, they would, they would respect that and they would honour that. Um, and, you know, I'm sure they would. Like, I'm, I'm absolutely sure they would. But, but it's something that you sisters need to bear in mind when you, when you think about getting married to a revert brother. So I hope, that I've, I hope that I've outlined some things that are quite important for you to bear in mind. You know, there are plenty of sisters out there, I think, who are getting an idea that a revert brother might be a better husband or whatever. And, you know, a, a lot of the time, revert brother and sisters have, have beautiful hearts, mashallah. Like, a, a lot of the time, they really have pure, sincere intention. They're absolutely rigorous upon their da'wah, absolutely convicted upon tawheed a lot of the time. And, and that's really beautiful. But just practically thinking about going into marriage, I really wanted to make this video just to make you aware of, of some of the real practical realities of it so no, not to persuade you either way whether you should or whether you shouldn't marry a revert but just just to be informed about it inshallah so that's everything from this video nothing particularly somali related but we're gonna have some more of that stuff coming soon and i uh, hope you enjoyed this video if you did as always don't forget to like and share it and don't forget to hit the subscribe button hit the little bell as well that'll give you notifications as well whenever i've got new videos coming out you'll be direct, you'll be informed about it straight away assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh